Today we're making my take on a healthy pasta primavera. Hi everyone, welcome to Black Cat Kitchen. I hope you're doing well. Today we're making a beautiful springtime recipe, my healthy version of a pasta primavera. This recipe features beautiful courgettes or zucchini, asparagus, peas, and a beautiful ricotta sauce. To make it extra special, I'm topping it with a lemony garlic gremolata. Let's get started. See the description below for a list of ingredients. Let's get to making our pasta. If you've never made pasta before, you can check out my comprehensive guide here. Today I'm making it slightly different by adding spinach and making it a beautiful green color. We'll start by using our frozen spinach, which I've let de-thaw. I'm just going to squeeze it so that quite a bit of that liquid comes out. Reserve the liquid because you may need it to thin out your dough later. So into my food processor, I'm putting 160 grams of our spinach, two eggs, and we're just going to whiz that up until it's nice and smooth. To this, we're going to add 300 grams of our pasta flour. I'm using double zero type flour here. We're just gonna let that go again. As you can see, our dough hasn't come together yet, so we're going to add a little bit of that spinach water in order to help this make one cohesive dough. So I'm just going to turn our dough out and give it a few kneads by hand. This just needs a little bit of extra flour just to make sure we've got the right consistency. You want to knead this until it comes into a very firm dough, adding flour as you need to. And that's our pasta dough ready. You can tell it's done by just giving it a little poke and it springs back up. We're going to cover this and let it rest for at least 30 minutes. While our pasta is resting, let's get started on our gremolata topping. Gremolata is a herby topping usually made with breadcrumbs that goes on top of pastas or roasted meats, especially if they're sort of stewy and cooked down to give that little bit of texture. In Italy, bread is very important. On a Saturday, the bread gets made and you've got bread for the entire week. By the end of the week, your bread's a little bit stale and so that's where gremolata came from. Now, I was going to make this with a beautiful sourdough loaf that I had a little end piece to, but the editor threw it in the bin not knowing that I was planning on using it and now I'm using regular breadcrumbs. If you are using breadcrumbs, I'd suggest the panko style because they're a little bit larger and they get a really nice crunch to them. So into our pan go about two to three tablespoons of olive oil. While our oil is heating up, I'm going to grate in one clove of garlic. Ooh, it's starting to sizzle. And the zest of half of a large lemon. We're going to juice this lemon later, so it's easier to get the zest off now. Make sure you stir it around so it doesn't burn. And in go our breadcrumbs. Because my sourdough had some herbs in it, I'm also going to add some oregano to this. About a teaspoon. You can use whatever herbs you have on hand that are hearty, like thyme, rosemary. I wouldn't use fresh herbs like basil here. And we're just going to let that toast up in the pan. So turn it to medium heat so that your breadcrumbs don't burn. And just let it sit there for a few minutes. Now at the end, I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and some freshly grated black pepper and set it aside to cool. Let's unwrap our pasta dough and get it rolled out. Just a little bit of flour to keep it from sticking. The spinach will make this a little bit stickier, so you wanna be extra cautious with your flour here. And you'll wanna cover up the rest of your pasta that you're not using while you're rolling out your pasta dough. So I'm just going to start by flattening out the dough so that it can make it through the rollers nice and easy. Now that my pasta is rolled out into nice thin sheets, I'm going to change over my attachment to my linguine setting. Just go through and make sure your noodles are nice and separated. And you want to give them a really good dusting of flour here to keep them apart. Because the spinach makes it that much more tender, 
they're more likely to stick together. So just be very delicate with it. So we're going to cut our courgette into batons. I like the way that the courgette cooks and the texture of it uh, in the baton rather than in um, circles or rounds. So I'm going to cut it into thirds and then just stand them up, cut these into thirds again, and then again into thirds. It's like the rule of three. So we want to take the bottoms off of our asparagus, but rather than cutting and not being sure where that woody part ends, if you just hold both sides of the asparagus and just bend gently, the end comes right off. It naturally breaks where the woody part ends. We're going to cut these on the bias, and how I like to do that is I like to just set it up on an angle there. So they're all about roughly the same size. A few little stragglers that are a little bit longer, so just give them a little trim and those are ready to go in the pan. So we've got our water on here to boil, but we want our sauce to get cooking first because that pasta is going to cook really quickly. So about two tablespoons of olive oil into a hot pan and I've got this on medium high heat. And in go our courgettes or zucchini. These are gonna cook down and get really nice and soft and they'll add a really lovely texture to the sauce. Once you start to see a few little brown bits forming on the zucchini, you can add in your asparagus. I like to add a little bit of salt at this point because it's important to season every layer. So now time for my little twist, a ricotta sauce that's gonna go all over that pasta and make it beautiful and creamy. So you want 250 grams of a wet ricotta cheese. To this, we're going to add the juice of half a large lemon. You remember I told you earlier we were going to juice it. A healthy grating of Parmigiano Reggiano, a good few tablespoons here, a little bit of salt, just a pinch, and some freshly cracked black pepper. Give that a stir and we're going to set it aside until it's time to mix it all together. I'm also going to add in a little bit of Parmigiano cheese to our gremolata. Now that our vegetables are still a little bit crisp, but nicely browned, we're going to add in our peas. I'm using about 100 grams of frozen peas here. Make sure to salt your pasta water and drop in your pasta. It will only take about two minutes for this to cook. Now that our pasta is ready, we're going to scoop it right into our pot with our vegetables. It's okay if that pasta water gets in there because we're going to be adding more anyway. Just going to toss that pasta around with the vegetables and now we're going to add in our ricotta cheese sauce. And on top of that, we'll pour a little bit of our pasta water and get it stirred all around. You may need to add more pasta water, that's fine. But it makes this beautiful, rich, creamy sauce. That looks sensational. Let's plate it up. creaminess from the ricotta cheese and that beautiful bite through that pasta. It's so tender. And that gremolata on top really adds a beautiful texture to the whole dish. And then you get, you know, the burst of a pea or bite through a bit of asparagus and it just has that bit of resistance against it. It's a perfect combination of textures and flavors in one dish. It's so healthy. It's so easy to pull together. It's great for any night of the week. And it's a perfect way to use up those spring summer vegetables. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you down in the comments. See you next time.